Hello and welcome back to ELT Under the Covers, our React series. And we are going to be doing our whole reacting shtick once more as English teaching professionals, giving you the, the good points, the bad points of what we see coming from the classroom in these wonderful magical clips. But first, introductions. Uh, I you have myself, Neil, of Team Teacher. And I am joined by my co-host, the ridiculous, the radish, Rich. Renegade Rich. Renegadious. Renegadious Rich. That's not a word. Please, <laughs> my students that watch this show don't use that. That's not a word. I invented it. Renegade is the adjective of renegade. I just found that out myself. Renegade <laughs> is the adjective of renegade? <laughs> yeah. And renegade is the adjective and the noun. So if you're a renegade, per, like a renegade teacher like me, I'm a renegade teacher. That's the adjective. And I'm also a renegade. He's a renegade rich without a clause. <laughs> this is a, a English teaching podcast. Well, it's uh, English language uh, teaching education just in general and um, where but today we're going to be looking not at wrestling but we're going to be looking at some old british comedy skits sketches kind of like if uh, there are any americans or people not familiar with uh, british culture uh it would be like the equivalent of like snl we had a whole bunch of uh comedians that or these duos that would do these sketches and skits and stuff like that one of those particular duos you may know um, they are known as Fry and Laurie. So they are one part Stephen Fry of Harry Potter narration fame. I don't know. That's what, I, that's what I'm going with. Americans know Stephen Fry. He's the, he's the Oscar Wilde guy. He's basically Oscar Wilde, but in the present day. That's a really good description of him. <laughs> He's a, he's a big fan of Oscar Wilde. Well. Yeah. yeah, and we've got uh, Hugh Laurie as well, who is actually British. He's not a, a savant medical doctor called House. House MD. <laughs> yeah. That's he's so. Good. And he's... if you if you're watching if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I wonder what Hugh Laurie is going to be like back in the day. Hold on to your underpants, kids. <laughs> Because, yeah, this guy is a little bit different to what you remember if you'd just solely seen him in house. So anyway, this skit that they did, they've done a skit, or they did a skit many years ago called The English Teacher. This is not maybe not so much English language, but it's English lit teacher. So he's going to be doing a little thing and we're going to talk about that. And we're going to say what's good or what's bad about it. And we might just even laugh our ass off. But let's check it out. Who's had a chance to look at Romeo and Juliet since last week? Nothing. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, well, I know, you know, you've all been busy. It's difficult to make time. But uh, anybody at all? <laughs> Is that footprints no, okay, on good. the board? Right, so like child's footprints. Right, that's probably better, in fact. In fact, well done. Good. Um... It's great. <laughs> uh, it's instantly relatable as well, isn't it? That's the thing. As a teacher, you're just like, ah, okay. Does it? Is it going to go off the off the rails in a minute? Uh, at the moment, it seems relatable anyway. No, it's it's really relatable, it's, especially when it's when it's really early on as a teacher, and you just kind of yeah. Especially if you're not a person that's used to or comfortable with silence. Yeah. You just you try to fill that hole. Yeah. I, I, yeah I even I even his movements where he's kind of like jutting around a little bit I feel that it, 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 yeah. it's not, it knocks me to my core I'm just like I was <laughs> totally like that as a I even still am to some extent but I was totally like that sort of jitteriness and I, I remember even being in this situation not too long ago where I was literally like okay kids uh, so the, it was this big project you start doing like this time to like <laughs> the, the the kids are supposed to bring in this um like uh, rubbish from home and then we use the rubbish to um like build a you know a robot or something or whatever it's supposed to be about teaching kids how to reuse um and you know it was like literally like okay kids who's brought some rubbish from home and it's just like crickets around the classroom <laughs> like oh okay uh well you know luckily here's some you know crafts from upstairs <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, here's some uh, some cardboard and wool and stuff that we're now going to turn into rubbish. <laughs> you know, class on recycling and reusing. <laughs> of course, the funny the funniest thing about that whole project is, you know, um, if even if they do bring in a load of stuff, and then you eventually have this like robot made out of bog roll in the fucking corridor or whatever for the for the next month. And then the kids are like, hey, teacher, what happens with the robot now? Now we throw it in the bin. <laughs> except, we, <laughs> except we can't recycle it because it's, it's covered in paint or uh, it's, it's got glue all over it or something. Yeah, so it actually, covered, like, it can't be recycled. Made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all these nasty chemicals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, what are, what no, are we teaching these the kids? That counts. Anyway, great. This is exciting. Right, now, uh, first of all, th uh, this is Mr. Lewis. He just popped in to see how we're all getting on. Uh, just ignore oh, him. Oh, observation. Uh, ignore him, but, uh, you know. Uh, well, yeah, here's an instance. I wonder, who can That's tell brilliant. me what ignore means? Anyone tell me what ignore Oh, my God, means? tangent. No, right, okay. Uh, <laughs> ignore means... Uh, just there, it says, you bar stool on the board. What does it say? I'm, it I... says, you bar stool. Barstool, what? Which I think is just, isn't it a polite way of saying bastard? You bastard. Oh, right, okay, they're trying to not yeah, get yeah. insulted. Because my, my, dad's, my dad says bar steward, you absolute bar steward. Oh, really? It's just, mm. I don't know, I, I feel like it's not that strong of a swear word anyway. It's kind of like I saying think a, I think it's a bit hell. of a dad joke, maybe. <laughs> yeah, probably. Mm. I was going to say something. What was I going to say? Um. Oh, the whole going on a tangent with ignore and he's like oh this is how this is how we're going to engage them okay 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 ignore here this is a really useful info i think it, and this is going to make me cringe if he does this he's going to try and board it you know like write it on the board <laughs> as a way to engage them because that's what be like okay okay so i feel like he's going to fully go into it and you should never go full into it just, just yeah, let it go. Fall into your random tangent when the students <laughs> have displayed zero interest. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but, geez, geez. Yeah, that's kind of like that is kind of like the point as to why they do bash TTT so much on the Celta, isn't it? Because yeah. they're basically trying to avoid that situation. Yeah. Where a teacher will just go like, "Oh, yes, uh, I was in France the other day." Blah 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 blah. blah. Students like totally. What, what's going on? This is the um, best example uh, of TTT. Not to pay too much attention to something, not to be all, all that... Tony, wake up. Uh, thanks. Uh, not to be all that bothered about <laughs> something. Like, Penny was ignoring me just then, okay? So... That's actually that's pretty good. Who'd like me to write it down? Can we write it down? Hands up. Who'd like me to write it down? Ignore. Oh, God, he is. <laughs> no one. Okay, so we're happy with ignore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's... Yeah. Boss. Uh, Rosie. Dad. Boss, it's uh, it's B-A-S-T-A-R-D. Yeah? Otherwise, good. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Romeo and Juliet. Uh, I would correct that. I mean, hands up who'd like to talk about he it. He got it wrong as well, didn't he? Did yeah. He? Oh, no, he did. He did. He did say B-A-S, not B-A-S. I've already said B-R-A-S. I said brass dad. I think he said B-A-S. B-A-R. Uh, yeah. No, okay, well, I agree. Let's let's just get straight in and read it, for heaven's sake. Um, I always like to get him involved as soon as possible. Okay, so, <laughs> oh, Romeo and Juliet. Um, do we have a Juliet? Who'd like to read Juliet? Anybody? What about, what about a Romeo? Come on, we've got to have a Romeo, yeah? A couple of Romeos. Maybe one, one, one Romeo, eh? Uh, no, okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll read them both, because then you can get, get a chance. To... <laughs> 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 uh, uh, will that be gone? It's not yet, yet near day. Uh, it was the nightingale, not the lark. Um, uh, uh, here's the, the fearful follower of thine ear. Um, likely she sings on yon pomegranate tree. <laughs> Believe me, love, it was the nightingale. Uh, this is Romeo now. Um, it was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. Okay, now. Um, he sounds Jordy when he's like saying, ah, look, love. Relevance, do you think Romeo and Juliet has to today's Britain? Who, who thinks it's got any, any any relevance at all? No one. Okay, right. So, so we think it's irrelevant, do we? 
Ah, uh, interesting. Right, so nobody... We don't think it's relevant. We don't think it's irrelevant either. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of, it's sort of interesting. <laughs> kind of grey area. Now, this is interesting. Good, well done. Um, so uh. Why do you think... Why do you think Shakespeare? It's it's he's really really done a good job of capturing the like the 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 new tin the new teacher like bombing fringe, isn't he? Like, yeah, you know it's it's so relatable. It's so, it's just so cringe as well, and I I I remember going I remember being do it that happening because I think if you're a new teacher, it's it's you're gonna have one of those just classes that happen but i just i can't remember the transition you know i can't remember going from from this to being you know just comfortable in class with an actual plan well yeah <laughs> it's it's so weird you know like I, how i feel like i wouldn't go go back to this mm, yeah well i mean once you've got enough experience like you know if you if something's going awry, you've got a million and one things. I mean, you know, theoretically, you would have built built up some sort of rapport with your students before, you, you know, before that anyway. So even if you have a dodgy class, they all kind of like you or get on with you at least, or at least tolerate you anyway, rather than this, where they kind of obviously seem to despise it for <laughs> the topic, um, you know, and it's not not working is it Whatever it's such a doing. weird setup as well because he's he's like he's trying to engage engage it you know like question and answer or get engagement from the students yet yeah, it's it's more if it, it's like a lecture hall it's a it's less of a lecture less of a not, well, not a classroom it's a small it's a small lecture hall though so i think you could have some engagement i mean i would argue that i think university professors should actually do more of it um, it's just that the way he's doing it, obviously, he's asking for volunteers, you know, and, you know, that might work if you've got some confident students, but on the other hand, you're probably going to have to nominate, you know, and yeah. also nominating straight to the front might be a bit much, maybe you could do a little pair work, you know, oh, okay, you know, find someone next year, or, you know, even just, you know, A, B, A, B, A, B, all the A's are Romeo, all the B's are Juliet, you know, off you go kind of thing, Yeah. maybe Romeo and Juliet's not the best example for this. Um, but he's doing a thing that I think also a lot of new teachers do, which is like when things start to go off the wall, they start doing more work. So he's like doing more work where he's now, he's being the students in the role of Romeo. He's being the students in the role of Julia. <coughs> he's asking them questions and answering his own questions. <laughs> it's so true. It's so yeah. true. And it's, you might as well just remove the students from <laughs> from the entire scenario because mm -hmm. he, he's I he's doing everything. Like he's gonna he's gonna get sacked by uh, Stephen Fry at the end of it or something. Though. Yeah, do you um when you have people observing, do you do you do you introduce them? Do you acknowledge them? Um. What I do now is make the students aware that someone will be coming in to observe them. Um, well, to observe the class. You know, you always say that thing where they're here to observe the class. You know, they're not here to observe you guys. Don't worry about it. Um, which is kind of uh, ironic and a lie because actually a good observer spends most of their time looking at the students, I, I would say. Yep. Because you should be looking at what the student, you know, is it relevant to the students? Are the students engaged? You know, what the teacher's doing? Well, whatever they're doing, if the students are engaged, then good stuff, right? Um, so it's actually a lie when you say that. But yeah, the idea is that they're not being examined. And uh, as long as they know beforehand, it doesn't matter when that person actually comes in, then, you know, you just have a seat ready for them and gesture to them. And I would, I don't think I would actually introduce them, to be honest. Um, I don't think it, I don't think it's necessary. I know some people observe and they kind of want that, especially in community of language teaching. You know, it's almost like the observer then gets, you know, I've had observers that start like getting involved in my class, you know, oh. chatting to the students. Okay, if you want to do that, that's fine. But, um, but I, you know, it's not something that I would, it's not something that I as a teacher encourage. I think this is a decision the teacher should make, mm -hmm. you know, and it's up to you. If you want to, if you want to introduce them, 
I stand to say high and all that stuff. I just think it's a bit cringy, to be honest. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's just as long as they know someone's going to come in at some point, they're going to watch the lesson for a bit. Just don't worry about it. Yeah. You know? And obviously you acknowledge them when they come in and gesture to the chair and they'll take a seat and they, you know, stay out of your way, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, generally I I don't acknowledge I don't acknowledge them. I used I used to get a lot of people come and observe, you know, my, my classes, um, you know, other teachers as well. And so the thing is, especially if you've got foreign foreign teachers coming in, it's the students are like, especially if, you know, the guy's really tall or the girls just got like really blonde hair or something in Asia. They're going to be like, oh, what's going on? So I'd be like, oh, we've got to observe. We've got uh, someone watching the class. And then I just move quickly on from that. And um, yeah. Yeah. it's mostly the the students that would try and engage them. But generally, I'll tell people yeah. to just kind of, you know, yeah. uh, get them to you know, keep focusing on the just class. I mean, yeah, if it happens, it happens. But, I mean... Yeah, like I said, I, I, I find it a bit cringy because when I've been an observer, like I've had some students, who've, some teachers who've kind of, you know, kind of involved me in the class a bit deliberately. You yeah. know, oh, you know, Rich, what do you think, you know, about whatever big question they've just boarded? And I'm like, uh, I think there is, there is some, there is some rationale for that in terms of like, ooh, look, we can get a native perspective or you know whatever someone else's perspective who um isn't just the teacher telling them it but i just it's just not necessary with an observer just, you know, yeah and the observer's got other things to do you know what i mean like yeah i know and sort of giving them your given giving you their giving your class their opinion on you know whether globalization is a negative thing or not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised he's not asked the the observer for anything, like as a la yeah, one last it desperate like he attempt. Might be, he might be going that way. Yeah. Oh really? Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Let's see. He has mentioned him, hasn't he? Yeah. He wrote something that was in a grey area. What did he mean by it? Did he mean anything by it? Or maybe he's just just being stupid. Um, who thinks that? Hands up, those people who think Shakespeare was being stupid. <laughs> no, so, all right. No, stupid. No, no, I was being stupid. So we don't think Shakespeare was stupid. But he was writing in a grey area. Why? All right, why are you all think about that one? I'm just going to come out with an opinion. <laughs> it is just an opinion, so you can all shout me down as usual. Um, <laughs> and that is that R Romeo and Juliet is about love. Uh, we have love, we do love in today's Britain. So Romeo and Juliet, therefore, isn't, wasn't, irrelevant. <laughs> what do you think about that? Any, any, anybody agree with that? Right, no, so nobody agrees with it, but did anyone find it helpful at all? <laughs> nobody. Right. No, you're right. Yeah. I was being unhelpful there. Oh, that's stupid of me. I shouldn't have. <laughs> I've, just got, I've just clouded the whole issue now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just holding you back. Um, well, who'd like me to stay? I mean, hands up those people who'd like me to stay. Oh, know? God. <laughs> No one, right? I, I, no, I agree. I agree. You're right. I've, I'm sorry. <sighs> the, the, the unfortunate collapse. <laughs> he just capitulated and <laughs> shriveled into himself. I really felt for him. I felt for him because you know, I've... there's times where I felt like that. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, you know, class can bomb, but um. Uh, I think I think the comedy a comedy cherry on that cake would have been uh, Stephen Fry doing something at the end there. I think it was just missing some sort of a raised eyebrow or like crossing a box. Or something. I don't know, you know. Or just you know, kind of stand pain. standing up next to him and just slowly just kind of like moving him out of the room or something like that, <laughs> bringing in the next new teacher just to die a death in the front I'm, of the crowd. I'm sorry, I don't normally have to do this, but I'm going to have to take over the class. <laughs> <laughs> that, but mm. overall, though, I did want to point out that I did. Uh, like when <laughs> I know it was it was just for laughs, but I did like when he was trying to explain ignore, and that person 
was asleep and literally ignoring him and he used him. I was like, well, that's actually, you know, a real life example. I- I'm going to give him a plus point for that. <laughs> true, true. You know, you can uh, sometimes you can find the uh, the silver linings. Um, that was yeah. the only one that I could pick up on. But what what, what would you also? It's, if you if you do get if you do get a class observation, uh, probably try and avoid saying stuff like. No, normally, the students are a lot more uh, interactive than this. <laughs> <laughs> or like you're asking the question, and you're like, you actually say it to the students. Come on, guys. Normally, you're so talkative and you love my lessons. <laughs> because I think there is some, especially for someone who's not used to being observed, you know, there is there is some inclination to be like, no, but, you know, normally it's we have a great time here and it's all going off the rails. It's like, yeah, but observations are kind of like that. You have to accept that a bit. It's yeah. kind of synthetic. It's a little bit synthetic. It's a little bit different. And that's why you really have to demonstrate that you have the ability to consider the problems and solutions and really put a lesson plan together that, you know, can if it even if it doesn't, if it doesn't actually translate to a real good results in the classroom, mm-hmm. you at least should be able to justify your understanding of why. So you should at least be able to go, oh, I considered almost everything, but that one thing, you know, and that's why the language point didn't work. Or you could justify why you took it in a different direction. Why, yeah. oh, yes, the lesson aim was we were going to discuss Shakespeare, but I decided that, you know, um, because the students had showed some interest and produced um, real-life examples of ignoring, I just thought that we should really focus on the meaning of ignore instead and we can tackle <laughs> Shakespeare next class, you know. Uh, you've got to have some real strong understanding of rationale and justification to be able to do that, but, but, but you can, and that's what observations are about. You know, so sort of saying like, oh, you guys all seem depressed today. Like, why aren't you being your normal happy selves where you, you know, let them play uh, noughts and crosses for five minutes and then run around like crazies, which obviously you're not going to do. In no. Class, right? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, when people have been observed, they kind of do need to take that into uh, account, the, the different dynamic that it brings. Uh, I found that quite... Mm. Uh, jarring in in China especially because the suddenly the class that was kind of a little bit more fun and interactive get really really quiet when they've got you know the other the teacher coming in yeah, to observe that's the the local teacher yeah. uh, or you know heaven forbid they have their parents in if you're doing some private classes then it's a different personality that you know they won't say anything mm. because they don't want to be you know get it wrong and and stuff like that and all that kind of confidence builds up so you you do have to have like a an alternative plan b in a way but you know any good teacher worth um their their meat worth their meat <laughs> has has like a something ready some sort mm. of filler some sort of uh, exercise that they can twist or uh, extend and, and kind of go into further but what i really wanted to talk about with with this uh, with this sketch apart from the cringe and the funny was how do you go from that to being an assured confident teacher is it um, literally just you know experience in you know building building you know, face to face time in the classroom up, mm. or is mm. do you need deliberate practice? Do you need reflection? Yeah, I think that um, you know, yeah, definitely experience helps. But I think that guided experience is much more effective, and I can say that from my own experience, even as someone who took teaching quite seriously and really. <clears throat> really tried to improve on my own. I don't know if you remember when we first started, you know, because you were doing talent. So kind of you were just, you know, you're following. You you had the guided thing where it was like, this is how we do it. This is what we want you to do, right? Yeah. Whereas I was just flying around in the dark. And, you know, I, I did, you know, I come up with all kinds of stuff that I thought was the right thing to do, but it was all just based on, you know, my life experiences so far. Not that it was completely without merits, but on reflection, some of the things might have been, you know, uh, and you don't know where to focus, you don't know what decisions to make. 
And I, you know, I did make progress, but it was kind of slow and grindy. Yeah. And it was only, um, I mean, I would say the Celta obviously was helpful. It would have been helpful right at the start. But even more helpful than that, I think, is actually working at an institution which gives a damn about your development. So it's having an institution where they do observations, and the observations are not like about like who's going to get sacked or not. The observations are supposed to be an opportunity to talk about how you can develop as a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about, it's supposed to be continual professional development. Mm -hmm. You know, how can you get better as a teacher? How can you get better and better and better and better and then eventually go off and do whatever, teacher training or management or whatever. But you have to, you know, you have to nail this teaching thing first. So it's 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 that, it's taking it forward for you. And I, I think OBS and feedback and also you going to observe some other teachers I think it's one of the best ways that you can improve as a teacher, but it needs to be guided. You know, you can try and do it on your own, but with a bit of guidance, some mentors and stuff. And I think um, in, in theory, they're called critical relationships, which is where you and another teacher kind of help each other. You know, you bounce off each other to grow. So you feed ideas to each other about, oh, I'll try this, I'll try this, oh, this happened. What would you do in that situation? And then you can improve that way. So that's what I would say. Yeah, yeah, you can't be... Uh, you know, a mountain unto itself, you, you, an island unto itself. I, what the f is going on with my allergies today? <laughs> Your idioms have just gone nuts. You're going to be like, wow, it's raining elephants and giraffes outside. <laughs> it's really early in Canada right now. So, you, you know, please bear with me. In the room. <laughs> well, I would, but my mouth is full of hamsters right now. So. That's uh, Neil referring back to a joke that we had before the podcast started. I'm really nailing that's, it today. That's real serious callback humor. It's like pre-podcast callback humor. Yeah, um, I completely agree with you, though. And I think a lot of teachers take too much on themselves. I think a lot of people in general do that. They think that um, you're, you've got to just figure it out yourself and someone's already done that uh, or they've at least done it in part for what you're looking at so if you go out there and you know talk with others you you build up not just yourself but you know the knowledge for the community as well and you know it's mm -hmm. it's more kind of like you're just one brain but if you connect and have all these relationships with lots of different people it's almost like you have the educate like community brain the the industry brain the you know the teachers mm. union or whatever you want to call it mm. um uh, this nexus i like that word nexus yeah. of education so yeah. you know and you, this is kind of what brandy does now with the with the with the the social networky things in china with the groups well, I, that in many ways, that's how it's evolved. And originally, uh, she was just having an outlet for you know teachers to connect and share materials. But that you know, then it div goes into oh, how can I develop uh, myself? I've got, had this situation, and it, it always yeah. naturally gravitates towards that because people mm -hmm. realize that they can't just do it by themselves. You know, I think it's one of those let's see if I can get this idiom right. It needs uh, a village to raise a child. I think it needs uh, a nexus to develop a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. that bad, right? That wasn't that bad. I think that it's was pretty right, good. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah I, I think that all the best places that I've worked have had that melting pot, um, that melting pot uh, teacher's room. And the very best place that, I, that I've ever worked had the best melting pot teacher's room a teacher's room where people really took pride in talking about doing this that or the other you know with the student like you know oh i've got this lesson on this i don't know what to do oh how about you should look at this try this you know um and okay there's a bit of ego in that i think you know people kind of want to show how good they are at teaching or whatever or well, a lot of people do anyway um but that's all right um you know as long as you get in that kind of melting pot of good you know, teachers giving each other kind of good ideas and stuff. It can, um, yeah, I think it's a sign that you're working somewhere good. And that's what you want. Yeah. If you want to start enjoying your job, you need that. And I would add more, even more in that um, 
observing other teachers, especially, you know, if you've got a, a, a local teacher, so, you know, like you're the foreign teacher and, you know, you've got the teacher that's your counterpart that's, you know, Chinese or Korean that, you know, deals with the mm -hmm. same classes. Homeroom. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. Um, when they have their classes with their English classes with your students, go and observe them. Watch what they are doing because I've picked up some of the most useful nuggets or ideas from watching them, especially around classroom management because they you kind of un you start not just to understand their style of teaching but the broader institutional style of whatever country that you are in you know um like in china that's how i got the whole uh they use different um like hand placements and stuff like they have drills of okay you know it's like stand to attention but for kids mm -hmm. and when the teacher does this they don't even say anything they just stand in front of the class and do this and all the students are like <laughs> and you know I, I, I didn't do stuff like that. I would do my own equivalent, but I've, you know, I tried using that and it's, it still works. So it's kind of, it's working with what they know and what is the culture there. And I, I just, I think you, especially with local teachers, it's such a great way to start to understand the local approach to education, the, the institutional approach. And it helps kind of fine tune and, adapt your style to fit within that mm. yeah no comment i'll just let that sit i'll just let that sit i took <laughs> i took a power sip right there <laughs> of my coffee um the, the, the equivalent of a mic drop when you can't actually drop your mic <laughs> just drop my coffee but I've not really got much else to say about that apart from it being did. an absolutely we, fantastic uh, representation of what it feels and looks like to be a, a teacher completely out of your depth. An awkward bombing teacher getting <laughs> observed by a, a rather uh, unsympathetic observer. Yeah, they nailed it. So, um, but what I would like to add to that is they nailed it so well, I think there must have been between Hugh, uh, Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry, some of them, they must have taught classes or have dealt with, they must have had some sort of educational background or, or something like that. Or, well, maybe it was just they're just leaning heavily on the comedy because, you know, if you're doing stand-up, you're going to bomb at some point. But, you know, Stephen Fry... Hugh Laurie, if you watch this and, you know, you want to come on the show and talk about, you know, did you have any experience with education? Do you have any thoughts on, you know, the current education Absolutely. system? Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you just want to come on and have a chat? We, yeah, we would love to have you on. I, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll open up this. <laughs> just because give us a bit of notice. Get... Yeah. yeah, good month notice. We'll pencil you in if nothing else comes up, like. <laughs> But we also would like to have your thoughts, your ideas. Please leave those comments. What did you think of the sketch? What did you think of our reaction to the sketch? How have you dealt with situations like that as a teacher? Or have you ever been in a situation like that as a learner? Did you deal with having to you know, listen to that kind, of, that kind of teacher? Yeah. Any final thoughts? Uh, no, stay bad. Stay bad. Be a Who renegade. Say that in like the nineties. Stay bad. I'd really just remember stay classy, San Diego. Stay bad. Stay classy. No, stay remember, like, share, and subscribe. If you're looking for more of my material, my shtick, uh, check out Team Teacher China. Dot com with our corresponding Team Teacher China YouTube channel where we have a lot of PowerPoint lessons you can instantly use within your classroom and we've got videos that match up with those so you can we kind of 
let you know a tutorial about how we kind of approach those classes along with other videos of teaching and etc we've got team teacher baby where is my uh journey as a father using kind of techniques from teaching with my child and also team teacher english where i take those powerpoints from team teacher china turn them into videos that you can give for homework or self-study for the kids etc and renegade rich yeah, you can catch me at youtube.com slash Professor Rich, where we do uh, weekly live stream Q&As, uh, English classes. Um, okay. And, you know, buy my, buy my book. If you're watching this, if you're watching this, uh, this podcast in like five years time, then, uh, you know, just, just, uh, just do a Google search for me and buy whatever I'm selling. Also like, subscribe and all that. <laughs> 